have to do is think about you when you appear. Thinking about me? Yeah, all the time. And I kind of figured you'd show up to see the old mayor. That's what I need to talk to you about. Don't you like your surprise? I do, really. All right, well, look, we take a breather here. We can start breaking her in right now. I said, I can't keep the horse. Why? She's yours. Maybe I bought it for you. I know. And I love you for the half, but you've got to take the mare back. All right, thank you very much. Well, I'm sorry. I did the best I could. But we can't get married in Carmel until tomorrow. Tomorrow? Think of it as an exercise in patience. Every newlywed couple should have to wait that long night before the big day. How come they told you tomorrow and they told me next month? The chapel suddenly became available. Either somebody got cold feet or just couldn't wait. You know, you must think I'm a real idiot. First of all, I want to rush this, and then I want to postpone it, and then I want to rush I it. I think marriage confuses the best of us. Don't you agree? Mason, I don't want anybody to think that we're eloping or just running away from everything. Don't you think it would be a good idea if we told your family we're going to get married tomorrow? Victoria, I am long past asking for Daddy's permission. Well, not just for your father's sake, for Sophia's. It'll still look like another victory for parental intimidation. I think it is important that he knows that this is what we want. Sometimes silence is the best message. No, Sophia deserves more than silence. I want her and everybody else to know that this marriage is our choice, regardless of the circumstances. All right. Are you sure you haven't changed your mind? I haven't. I need to believe that. I need to believe that this is what you want. What the hell are you doing? I'm trying to get rid of my deep-seated aggression. Why now? Where's Kelly? Do you see her with me? Do you see me jumping for joy? What happened with your meeting? Dr. Kramer made it a bust. Well, who is he, your shrink? You know, you have the attention span of a small ape. He is the professor that said he had information about Kelly. Just because some egghead didn't come through for well, you. The egghead reason. doesn't exist. I checked. He is not on the university staff. Poor. You must feel pretty stupid. Compared to the company I keep, I'm a genius. There must be somebody working on the inside. Who? If I knew that, I'd know where Kelly is. To trace the call back to university, we'll find it. I don't see what difference it makes. She can't get that far. The woman is making me look bad. I didn't fight my way back into office to be shown up by a Capwell. Now don't forget Cruz. He's done a pretty good job of showing you up. I wonder if anybody'd know if I strangled him. I just don't want you to lose your grip on reality. Reality is what I make it. Reality is Kelly Capwell behind bars. Reality is Cruz Castillo in jail for a long, long time. That's my reality. I forget about all the uh, stock market stuff in this Dow Jones. Put my money on that. Hi, Mama. Where's Daddy? In the study? I'll go get him. What? What's going on? Uh, well, we have some news about Kelly. Oh, no, what happened? No, it's good news for you. Darling, it's amazing. The stock hold will on, be... Hold on, may have some important news for us. Uh, yeah, Mr. C., do you know a Charles Marcus, a professor at a USB? Of course I do. We were on some committees together. Why? Do you trust him? What does this have to do with us, Daddy, Daddy, do you trust him? Yes, he always struck me as a good man. Well, he came out to our house a little while ago. Apparently, he ran into Kelly and Jeffrey out at the university and says he can arrange for the family to meet him. Dear God, when? <laughs> Tonight. We're going to see Kelly tonight. Oh, it's real. <laughs> so when I saw the ad, I kept it because I thought I could do something. And I turned around and buy Jake's horse right from underneath him. I wonder he acted so weird. Well, no, you, how could you know? But see, Ted, this horse is just the beginning for him. Let me ask you something. You, you were going to buy the horse for him? I, I, a gift? Well, no, I, I was that he could get a loan. I mean, we could co-sign. I don't know. I just know it's important and I wanted to try. What are we thinking about everybody else? You're not mad? Nope. Not at all. I'm after helping somebody else out. Oh, thank you. You know, I mean, 
Jake and I aren't all that different, especially when I was working with your father. Uh, I wanted a lot out of my life also, and I didn't know how to go about it. I mean, I didn't have money for college, and I felt really trapped. And I met you, and uh, we fell in love. But see, Jake doesn't have anybody. All right, well, you think he's going to accept our help if we help him out? I don't know. I, he won't accept charity. No. We could sell it to him. I, I could kind of negotiate a price with him. He could pay it off in installments if he wanted to. Uh, unless, of course, you don't want to sell it. I think it's a terrific idea. All right. Uh, okay, well, what do we do from here? Am I pushing it if I say I'd like to handle this? See, I just think he'll accept it if it's from me. No, not at all. I think that's a good idea. My rights have been violated. I was brutally arrested in public. My reputation's been ruined. So file a complaint. I have done nothing but complain. I can't even get my jewelry back, Keith. You will get it back. It is simply evidence. Well, you sound like you went to a concentration camp. It was very degrading. What if they'd asked me to submit to a strip search? I'm surprised you didn't insist on it yourself. I want my jewelry back. How else am I going to get the money to invest in Acme Pharmaceuticals? I will sell your body to science. I don't care. You don't care about anything but Kelly Capwell. Listen, why don't, you, why don't you go out and beg for capital gains? I don't care. Just let me work. McMahon, this is Timmons. Listen, I want surveillance on the entire college, okay? I mean, it's like three people in each building. Now, I don't care about your budget, you moron. I just want you to do this. is my number one priority. No, I don't want excuses. I don't want excuses. I just want results. You understand that? I've heard this before. Do you which mind I, if just... Which later, okay? Okay. Listen. What do you think about patrolling, parking at the airport? How does that suit you? Oh, no? Look, I'll, I'll just check in here. I'll just do anything you want. Just shut up. No, what I want is the framework line frame, okay? I don't want, I want the building, I want the number and the extension. It should have been done an hour. Do it and get back. All right? Goodbye. Ugh! All I want is some cooperation around here. I do my job, all I get is a giant headache. And the worst, the worst headache, the worst headache in this place is Castillo. He's a grade A migrant. I should have let him drown. What? I didn't tell you. <laughs> I go into the lab, and they're both in a sense deprivation tank. You know what I mean? They're floating around like sex crazed guppies. Well, that's nice. I should report. I should report. A school, a piranha, right in there. An instant Castillo buffet. Sounds like a good idea. Oh, you better high tension wire. Stick it right in there. Zap him. Zap him. Zap that smug smile off his face. I. <laughs> French fry Castillo, be wonderful. It'd just be wonderful. I wonder how much CC paid him to keep this all a secret. Oh, what do you think it was? Stock options, cash? What? Your phone's ringing. I can just find a way to find out the guy that's on the inside, link him to Castillo. I don't care how many gold stars Castillo has on his record. He's going to be out. District Attorney's Office, Keith Timmons. Who is it? Uh, l let me see. Not sure he's back from Pluto. It's for you. Timmons. Fine. Right. Where is it? Right. No, I'll take it from there. Um, you just... No, no, I want you to check his movements for the last week, okay? And don't tie up this line. This is something I need, all right? Okay, goodbye. I want you... Hey, I just got that thing warmed up. You know what are you? Stupid by heredity or by environment? No, I you said I could do whatever I wanted. To. Fine, yes, good. Go. Walk. Fine. But no more electronic larceny. I'm gonna leave until you start acting normal. No, wait a second. I, I have an idea. You go back to Cece's hacienda, all right? Put an ear to the wall. We just trace where the call came from. The one to the university. How exciting! Yeah, it's uh, 
Dr. Charles Marcus. <laughs> he also reserved the university chapel for a private function. Well, maybe he's a religious man. Or maybe he's using the sanctity of the chapel to help get Kelly away. Now, why would he help a perfect stranger? Well, A, maybe it isn't a perfect stranger. And B, your husband's money buys a whole lot of help for Kelly. Don't they get tired of all these complicated plans? Well, they see they'll do anything they can as long as Kelly's free. So will I. Hey, I'm mad at you, remember? No. Not mad. I'm normal again. Use that sexy ear to find out what you can about this Dr. Marcus. And then bring it on back to your old buddy, Keith. Then can I play with a computer? Yeah. No. No, 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 no. Listen, but I want the details, okay? I'm talking about juicy, incriminating, private details. You go like the good little stick you are. And bring them back. Good the top of there. According to this Marcus, there's a crypt running underneath the chapel sanctuary. Kelly and Jeffrey will be hidden there till we can get the family inside. If we can get the family in, they follow us all the time. That's true, which may be a good reason to scrub the whole idea. No. No. No, Sophia's right. We'll get through Timmons' surveillance somehow. The only thing Kelly's got going for her is the hope of seeing the family. I'm not about to take that hope away from her. Daddy, you know we're going to have to get her out of the country as soon as possible. We'll find a house, a safe house close by. Sweetheart, if we could just have a few minutes with Kelly, all together, it would be so much better for her before she has to go away again. It would be better for all of us. And I'm thinking about myself, too. Because if she has to go and I don't get to see her, I don't think I can stand it. Well, I missed the latest meeting of the local brain trust. What do you want, Mason? I don't want or expect anything here, Dad. I've come to make an announcement. Victoria and I are leaving for Carmel. We're getting married tomorrow. Basically, are you really sure? Oh. Why not save the family all those months of preparation? Showers and bachelor parties. Then there's the question of the best man. Somebody's feelings always get hurt. But tomorrow, I mean, why so soon? No reason not to. Victoria and I know it's what we want, and it's our wedding. You won't regret the decision, Mason. My only regret is that you so thoroughly approve. Mason, congratulations. Oh, at last, a sincere word. Thanks, Cruz, I appreciate it. Don't break out the champagne yet, Dad. We'll save the toasts until I get back. This decision doesn't look like it's making you happy. I want to be happy for Mason. I know you do. Then you just have to accept her as his wife. What difference does it make if it's tomorrow or six months from now? I want to, but I can't help feeling that there's something wrong here. I mean, I'm sorry, I don't want to be rude. I never went for all that ceremony anyway. You'll all get announcements in the mail. And uh, don't worry about gifts. You can send them along later, preferably in large numbers and exchangeable. <laughs> you haven't mentioned this. But I would really like to be at the ceremony. It's a very important day in your life. Well... Thank you for the sentiment, Sophia, but we've really planned on a private ceremony. Are you sure, Mason? Does it matter, Dad? Would you be there either way? Mason, I'd like to have a luncheon for Victoria when you get back, if you don't mind. Whoa! Suddenly we're the most popular couple in town. You guys sure know how to keep a fellow on his toes. I don't understand why you wouldn't want us at the ceremony, Mason. We would really like to be there. Well, I realize it would be better press in the society pages, Dad, but this is for Victoria and me, not for the Capwell image. Mason, uh, does it have to be in Carmel? Good gracious, not you too, Cruz. Well, I have an idea, if you'll bear with me for a second. Why, do you want to come too? As a matter of fact, I do. And so does Kelly, I'm sure. How about you and Tori tie a knot in the chapel at the university tonight? Well, your name might not be Capwell, Cruz, but you sure catch on fast. It's a perfect solution, Mason. Perfect for whom, Dad? You may have a patented formula for using people, but I'm afraid that my wedding is off limits, as is my bride-to-be. We're not asking for ourselves, we're asking for Kelly. Well, how far do we stretch the bounds of family loyalty? Do you think Kelly would ask me to do this? No, she'd put what you want ahead of her own needs. Would you do the same? Not this time. 
You're not even considering your sister's future, are you? Obviously not. All right, stop it, both of you. We cannot make a sideshow of Mason's wedding. You know, Keith very well might see through all this. We already tried one plan that didn't work. He's bound to be suspicious. Finally, the voice of reason. I see. Let Tim and suspect whatever the hell he wants. If we keep this plan tight, there won't be any more surprises. Just one. I'm not going to ask Victoria. I'm not going to subject her to the whole mind-numbing mess of the Capwell family affairs on the first day she becomes a Capwell. Don't take it all out on Kelly when all you want to do is have your revenge on me. So if it were up to me, I'd do it in a second. But it's not up to me, so, so. What do you say I talk to Tori? Curious, sir, and curious, sir. Why not? Victoria should decide this, shouldn't she? Victoria should have the kind of wedding she wants. So what about it? Can I talk to her? I don't know. What do you think, Eden? Ted only bought the horse because he thought I wanted it. it must be nice. Well, and I kept the ad because I knew you, how important it was to you. I thought I could help. I'll get over it. You learn to adjust your sights after a while. Well, what if you could have the horse now? I can't, obviously. But you can. You can buy it from us. I mean, you can make installments, but we'll worry about that later. The important thing is, Jake, that you have your chance now. Whose idea was this? What difference does that make? Who's Haley? Ted's. Ted thought that it would help the horse. Well, I'll just bet he did. I'm... Look, you go home and you tell your husband I don't accept charity. As deprived and pitiful as I am. This is not charity. Well, whatever it is, you can keep it. Jake, you've been giving me writing lessons. You haven't asked anything from me. Why won't you let me help you? You've been talking about me. You've been sitting around someplace saying, Oh, Jake, yeah, he's got his pride. How are we going to bring this up to him? Just you can't tell him it's a gift. He'll blow his top. And you know, Haley, you're the last person I expected this from. Darling, I've... I've left word for the photographer to meet us there. Uh, oh, I don't know what to do about the cake or the music. Uh, oh, do you have an organist or something? Don't worry, sweetheart. We'll get it all done in time. Okay. You two going for another dry run? No, it's not us we're talking about, Jean. That sounds like pretend time to me. Time to pretend that Jean is out of the way. Time to tie the knot, hopefully around the two of your necks. You heard the lady. It's not us. Although we wish it were. It's another secret that you want to keep me with. No secret. No secret at all. Mason. He married. He and Victoria. Today. Just a few short hours. Privately. Just the family. It doesn't include you. What's the matter, Gina? You're awfully pale all of a sudden. Oh, how did he go? Come on. The only thing the Catwells have more of than money is surprises. <laughs> Mind if we come in? Uh, no, of course. Come in. You, um, you may want to sit down for this. Well, what is it? Uh, we need your help, Victoria. Okay, what do you want me to do? Well, I think you should hear us out before you volunteer anything. Uh, the family wants us to change our wedding plans once again. Now, we understand if you don't want to go ahead and do this. But we'd like it if the whole family could be at the wedding. We, we won't blame you if you don't want any part of it, since we've already planned on a private ceremony. Mason, what is it that you're not telling me? The, um, the family would like us to get married tonight at the university chapel. That way it can be a family affair with everyone in attendance, including Kelly. What do you say? You do it or not? Were you about to call me? No, no, that was uh, Mr. Abernathy. He's trying to track me down. Why? I don't know. He wants to talk to me about something. I'm kind of afraid he's ticked off about me taking so much personal time off. You, you want something? No. I'm not lying. So how'd it go with Jake? Not good. Thought it was a handout. Well, you called it. We should have even tried. Hey, no, wait a minute. You didn't feel that way earlier. I know. I'm just tired of being dumped on every time you try to give a guy a break. He thinks anybody who is not penniless cannot be trusted. No, excuse me. That's not true. He has no problem getting along with you. Oh, 
Don't be angry at me. I'm not angry. I was very nice what you tried to do, Haley, but some people are just so bloody narrow-minded they don't know a friend when they see one. I don't know. Maybe if he just thinks about Would it. Would you do something I'll... for me? I'll try. Put it out of your mind. Okay. Look, there's nothing you can do about this. Some people you can't just always solve their problems. Look at Kelly and, and myself. I'd, I'd do anything in the world to help her out. I know. So just put Jake out of your mind. He says he wants to take care of himself, so let him. I found your private stock. You're being a little piggy again? What is it you've been what? celebrating? Love. Ours? Oh, come on, get over yourself, Keith. But I did your dirty work for you. I went to the atrium, held my ear to the ground, got all kinds of information. What did you find out? They didn't even try to hide it. No. Can't do anything about it. But it to me. What? What is it? You eat the flowers. I'll get the photographer. <laughs> well, I may not be a TV star, but I can buy and sell that little... Ouch. Tell me what you found out. It's got the chapel all ready and waiting. There's going to be a wedding tonight. Mason. You're kidding. I thought I'd fall for that. Why didn't they have Ted? Bar Misfit at City Hall. I got you. Know, I love these people. They're better than the Three Stooges. Here they are. They keep giving out that there's going to be a wedding. It's going to be Mason's. But they never mention a fiancé. Oh, believe me, there is one. I had the pleasure of meeting Miss Victoria Lane, star of stage, screen, and behind-the-scenes scenes. Well, I certainly hope her marriage is as happy as mine. Victoria Lane. Thought she learned a lesson. Apparently, she thinks it's okay to get in my way again. Can't you arrest her for something? Well, there's a possibility. I know a lot about this. But I think maybe it's better to find out what they plan. It's not just some plot. Mason's really getting married, I know. He's not lying, I'd know it if he was. Oh, poor baby. Well, just, you know, think of it this way. Victoria will fit right in with that family. I mean, what's, what's one more murderer, huh? <laughs> Maybe I'll get something else in this park. Maybe I'll find a way to link Victoria to covering up Kelly's whereabouts. Don't you have a, a bottle around here somewhere? You've had enough. How come all the Capwell men have this thing for dumpy actresses? Console yourself with this. Victoria has been poison and misfortune to every person that she's ever met. She and Mason should be very happy together. This is the worst day of my life. She don't care. Nobody cares. The only man in the world who's ever understood me is marrying somebody else, but who cares? He certainly doesn't. Years from Mason Catwell. Hey. Sober up. You got a bouquet to catch. Obviously, the whole thing depends on timing. Keith will probably have somebody watching each of us. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not worried about that. We wouldn't ask you to do this if there was any other way. Cruz, I want to help. Yeah, well, I hope you don't regret it, because... Well, it, it may not be the right thing to do with, with your wedding, you know. Oh, well, it's not the right thing. But Mason and I will get married tomorrow as planned, and we'll consider tonight sort of like a wedding rehearsal, okay? Okay, if you're sure. But you, you know what Timmons is like. I mean, he could make things tough for you in other ways, Tori. Don't look so worried. Come on, let's get to work. Cruz looks like he's planning the Normandy invasion. Well, he likes to be thorough. And how do you like to plan? I don't. I think it's too risky. Any other reason? It's enough. Victoria's a trooper, isn't she? No wonder she survived Hollywood. I think you got this straight, right? Yeah. If something goes awry, you just go on your instincts. Uh, welcome to Santa Barbara's first improvisational nuptials. You know, I gotta tell you, I think we're banking a lot on Keith uh, believing Tori's performance. I don't know if this is worth it. I think we have a lot at stake here. Eden, why don't you just say what you mean? You don't think I can do this? Oh, no, Tori, I'm just thinking of Kelly. No, I think you're just thinking of yourself. 
You know, I really wanted to help this family. I really wanted to feel part of it. But obviously, that's not going to happen. Tori, I didn't Oh, just that. get out of here, all of you. Leave me alone. You go too, Mason. Get out of here. No, oh, Victoria, I'm sorry. I'm just saying that maybe, I mean, anybody couldn't pull off this performance under that much tension. You want to bet? I'm really nervous. You believe in bad omens? I believe in bad omens. I go upstairs, get in bed, and we'll get out for two years. <laughs> All night to have a storm tonight. We're taking an enormous risk, as you see. You want to back out? Where's Ted? I don't know. We'll leave word here for him. Hope he gets to the ceremony on time. Mason's going to be out. One best man. Cruz will be there. So will you. Well, I don't know if Mason would want you at this point. Can we uh, curb this conversation for tonight? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. We can curb it. If you would admit that you're insensitive to the fact that you've been using your son, I'll stop. I think we better go. CT. I know you're torn. And I know Mason has hurt you in the past. Look, I already told him that I am proud of him when I told him he knows how I feel. Now, I, I really think tonight is not the night. Tonight is perfectly the right time to talk about this. You also told Mason that you didn't trust Victoria and she is the last person you would want in this family. I also encouraged the marriage. I said I would accept the child. And whose sake did you do that for? Eden? Yes, for Eden's. Then what does it have to do with Mason? Mason and the child will be rewarded. Oh, the hell with the money, Cece. I am talking about your son's happiness. Go to him, darling. Go to him and tell him that he doesn't have to marry Victoria for you. That he doesn't have to marry Victoria for this family. But what you're interested in is his happiness. That you want the best for him that this life can bring. God's sake, Cece. Tell your son that you love him. How about a break? No, thanks. We're a little short-handed. Uh, Haley told me you really didn't go for the idea of buying the mayor from us. No, it's not my style. You know, we can work out a schedule, Jake. Look, I don't want to talk about it, okay? If you're here to work, fine. If not, get out. All right, you're just the man I hope to see. Ah, I, I was just about to go up to the house. Well, that's not important. I wanted to speak to both of you, Jake. Look, I think it's about time that we gave you a promotion around here. So, starting tomorrow, you will be co-head groom along with Jake. I, I haven't really been working here that long. Well, listen, I can recognize talent and a hard worker. Wait, Jake, I just thought he was next in line. Oh, listen, there'll be plenty of work around here, especially since we're, the expansion is starting. Oh, when do those new ponies come in? Two days. That's why I need a special groom to tend to them. And that's where you come in, Ted. Well, you know, those thoroughbreds are pretty temperamental. I mean, I thought I was going to get to handle the new strain. Well, you'll have to blame yourself for my choice, Jake. I mean, the way you've managed this place, uh, well, we can't get along without you here. There's more to being a groom than the routine. No, oh, no, look, I need you right here. Right here, because I've never had a man before that could run this place the way you do. Besides, that'll free up Ted to accept his new responsibilities. forget. Why are you doing this? Why does any man get married, Gina? Oh, don't tell me it's for love, Mason. Love is not for people like us. And what is for people like us? You know, we could have made it. If 
They would have just left us alone. Where did you get this new and improved version of the facts? You hate me, don't you? You blame me for letting Mary know that you and I had had an affair. You're right. Don't do this. Don't punish me like this. This marriage, it's wrong. And you know it. Victoria's a snake, a bloodsucker. I think you got her confused with yourself, Gina. Can I stop you from making the biggest mistake of your life? No, Gina, the biggest mistake of my life stands about so high and smells like a distillery at the moment. It's because I care. Because I care that I had a few tricks before I could look you in the eye, all right? Well, here it comes again. If I remember the speech, Gina, it starts with something like, I'm the only woman for you, and ends with, there's never been anyone else. Let's not kid ourselves, Gina. We could fill a coliseum with the men who've enjoyed your favors. But none of them... None of them made me feel like you. What can I do to make you believe that? Hand over the tape that'll free Kelly. You asked me to give you the one thing that I can. Mary was such a good person. I could never be that good. It should have been me that died. You wish it were, don't you? Here. I don't blame you entirely for Mary's death, Gina. I made my share of mistakes. I wasn't just an innocent bystander. Thank you for that. But I sure as hell blame you for ruining Kelly's life. I hate it when you're mad at me. No, Gina. Mad is when you've lost your mind. Angry is when you exchange harsh words. But I despise you, Gina. I live for the day a cell door is welded shut with your name permanently engraved on the door. You've taught me the true meaning of loathing. All I wanted to do was help you. I just want you to appreciate me. Bye. Mary. Mary Victoria. What do I care? I'll express your sincere good wishes to the bride. It won't work, Mason. The only person you've ever been able to maintain a relationship with was a bottle. Everything you touch turns sour. And so will your marriage to Victoria Lane, or my name isn't Gina DeMott Caswell. Well, I say you look very, very handsome, Mr. I guess I better look good, because I will be escorting the most beautiful woman I have ever seen. Well, now, the bride is supposed to be the most beautiful woman in the West. I guess that's only if it's the real thing. You know, I can't help but thinking I wish this was our wedding. If it were, I wouldn't be here, Eden. I'm not going to push my luck by seeing my bride before the ceremony. Well, we're not going to have any more bad luck, or didn't anybody tell you? No second. Mm -hmm. Better take off. Looks like it's going to start raining. You know, I still can't help thinking about Victoria being a part of our family. I know it's weird, isn't it? I'm not jealous or anything, really, I'm not. I know. Do you think she loves Mason? I hope so. Well, I just keep thinking of the family dinners, you know, the holidays, and... about her becoming a permanent part of our family. I think she'll become a part of your brother's life, not ours. I guess it's sounding like I'm not really happy for him. And I am. I really am. So private in here. Quiet and peaceful. Mm -hmm. Let's hope it stays that way. Well, I'll do my best to keep... Victoria's fans away. What are you doing here? Oh, listen, I'm sorry, guys, but I'm afraid you're stuck with me. You have the habit of helping out a suspected murderer. You know, I think Kelly takes after your side of the family. This is a private family wedding. It has nothing to do with Kelly. 
Well, I'll be your private family usher. You don't have much help in the receiving line, it looks like to me. Nervous? <laughs> to the show? Only to the trained eye. Well, I always get opening night jitters. I want to do this right for you and your family, Mason. I have complete and undying faith in your talent. And if I haven't told you already, you make a beautiful bride. Thank you. We'll save the uh, kiss the bride stuff until later. <laughs> right. Come in. I'm sorry, uh, but I need to talk to Victoria. Would you mind leaving me alone for a couple minutes, Mason? Not at all. I'm really proud of you. Yeah. I thought a promotion like this would make me feel this bad. Mr. Abernathy would not have chosen you if he didn't think you've earned it. Well, Jake's worked there much longer than I have. Now, why did Mr. Abernathy pick me? I don't understand. Jake knows so much more about these thoroughbreds than I do. I thought you were the one that told me we can't solve everyone else's problems. You should have seen the look on his face when Mr. Abernathy told me that I got the job. Uh, Ted, Jake... He loves to work with horses. He, he's not going to let this one thing stop him. I hope you're right. Because when I left that place, he looked like he was going to put a fist to the wall. Almost showtime, Dad. You're not going to send Tim as big here, but... Uh... What the hell is Gina doing here? Mourning the passage of my bachelorhood, I think. Look, Mason, there is a lot that I have not said. Oh, no last-minute confession. Dad, getting married, not hanged. Is Ted here? No, we haven't been able to find him. Well, save from another milestone in Capwell hypocrisy. Look, this may not be the real thing, but I would be quite honored if you'd let me... Stand in as your best man? May hurt your image. I'll risk it. All right, if you like. Suppose I should have one. And I have been thinking about tomorrow and the marriage and what it uh, means to you. And I'm not sure it's a good idea anymore. What are you doing? I was saying the rosary. I swiped it from Rosa. Well, maybe it would help stop this stupid wedding. But you don't know what you, you don't know how to do a rosary. It's not that complicated. Well, you say a prayer that Kelly and her friends show up. I got enough men around here to arrest the Gabor sisters and all their husbands. You really had me going there before. You were very convincing. I'm sorry about some of the things I said. I needed to make you believe that I could do this. Well, thank you doesn't seem to be quite enough. I really do thank you for everything you're doing for my sister. I don't blame you for having doubts. Well, since none of us are going to be at the wedding tomorrow, I thought I... Well, I wanted to give you something. And you can wear it at your real wedding if you, if you like. My grandmother's. Even it's beautiful. I didn't think you had anything borrowed. <laughs> I hope you and Mason will be very happy together, Victoria. Thank you. What are you trying to say, Dad? I thought you were the champion of five-minute marriage. What I think and what I want does not make a difference. I want you to be absolutely sure that this is... I think we better put this moment of truth on us. That's our cue.
talking about? Victoria hasn't even shown up yet. Something's up. I can feel it. The rosary beat. It worked. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go outside and check for myself. Girl. You know, we almost had a half dozen coronaries out there. Yeah. Well, I really wanted to wear this tonight. Say one thing for Eden, she certainly knows how to rise to the occasion. Oh, what she did really meant a lot to me. It was as if she was saying, I trust you to make my brother happy. And you will, but not unless we get out there and start. Okay, I'm all ready. Break a leg. Quiet around here. What's, well, what's going on? The chachos. Oh, thank goodness what's you wrong? two are finally home. There's what's going to be a wedding tonight. <laughs> Who? When? Uh, right now. Now. Mason and Victoria Lane are at the university chapel. They're getting married tonight. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here in the sight of God and these witnesses to join this man and this woman in the bond of holy matrimony. If there's anyone here present who has reason to object, he may speak now or forever hold his peace. You may join your right hands. Do you, Mason, take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife? Mason, I can't do this. It's too soon. I'm sorry. I can't. Victoria. A celebrity sit-around on the next Oprah Winfrey Show. Then on Donahue, get a revealing look at some of the hottest male dance groups as they perform from Chicago. Oprah, followed by Donahue, tomorrow morning, starting at 9 on Channel 2.